So now it's all, we're ready. So again, this is gonna be something that you're gonna do throughout the year. You're going to be meeting with some um, volunteer docents that are going to do six different lessons with you. And these lessons, you're gonna learn more about certain topics like say ants or flies or bees. Um, and then those are going to help you when you're doing the research for your long-term project. All right, so your teacher is gonna be doing this long-term project with you. So teachers, I hope that you are up for a trip to Tule Ponds at Tyson's Lagoon. We will be arranging those dates with you. If you have never been, make sure you wear comfortable shoes that you can hike around in. I'd wear like tennis shoes, like clothed shoes. Um, and we're gonna go and find all that we can there. You'll see a little bit of Tule Ponds here in just a minute. All right, so to get going, let me see if I can get my screens to go. All right. So what your long-term project is going to be about is these creepy crawlies. Now, I know some of you may like bugs. Most of you probably don't like bugs, but we're going to learn about them and figure out cool things about them because there are a lot of bugs that we need that are beneficial to us. So we're going to look at how all these creepy crawlies, how their population changes through time, through the whole school year. So right now the weather is still pretty warm. What's going to happen to all those bugs when it's the winter and when it's raining? And then what's going to happen when it gets warm again? So those are the observations that we're going to make. So we're going to be looking at all the different types of bugs that we have. If you look at my pictures right here, does anybody recognize any of these bugs that are on the screen? On the very bottom, let me get my laser pointer up here. Down here, this green one, that's a praying manis. It is a meat eating kind of insect. That's funny because it's pushing the other one off. What do we got up here? You guys know that. Ants, we find ants everywhere. They're all over the place. I bet we have those at the school zone somewhere. So we'll have to look for them. This one you may not know because this is a millipede. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So in our long-term project, we're going to study all these different kinds of bugs and we're going to figure out how many we have of the different kinds. And then we're going to plot them on a graph and we're going to see if there are any patterns that come out to us, um, see if any make sense. So in our animals that we're going to be studying, this is the kingdom, kingdoms of the animals, the tree of life. So if we look right here, we've got plants and animals. So we are just going to be studying over here on the animal side. Now, when we get over here to the animal side, we've got way down low are the protistas, and up high, we've got our animalia, like our vertebrates. That's where we are. But we are going to study this group right here in the red. Oh, excuse me. We're going to be studying these arthropods. That's where all the insects are, as well as spiders. And then look, we're also going to be studying these annelids. That's a fancy way for saying worm. And mollusks. That's a fancy way for saying slugs or snails, all right? So again, we're going to be looking at all these different types. And now again, why do we need to study bugs? And that's because there are some bugs that can hurt us, that are harmful to people. One of those is the mosquito here on the top. Mosquitoes are bad. Have you ever gotten a mosquito bite? What happens to your skin? It gets bumpy. But then mosquitoes can carry diseases that make us very sick, like malaria, um, the Zika virus um, and the West Nile virus are all things that can make us sick. And then there's some other bugs too that eat some of our crops that we're using and some even eat our houses. Have you ever seen those big ho houses that have the big tents on them? That means that house is being treated for termites. And these are the little pictures of the termites. They like to eat the wood. So we've got, again, a lot of these insects that are bad, that are uh, harmful to us. But then we also have some though that are very beneficial and we like to have those around. We have a lot of insects that help our plants grow by pollinating. If you've ever seen bees going back and forth with yellow all over them, they're pollinating those plants, making new plants. Some of our animals will produce a uh, food for us like the honeybee does with the honey. And then others are beneficial because they will eat some of these other bad insects. So that's good as well. So again, the more we study about them, the more we can learn. But one thing I wanna point out is safety. So anytime that you're studying your insects, whether you're at Tule Ponds or at your own house, remember that many of these animals, they can bite and they can sting. Now we don't wanna put you in a point where you have to come up or anything like that. 
the main thing is to always look where your feet are standing. Because if you're standing in the middle of this ant trail that's at the top here, what's going to happen? Those ants may end up biting you because they're just trying to protect themselves. They don't want to be hurt. All right. So again, always look where you're standing. Make sure you're not in an ant trail. And the way we're going to study our animals is we are going to look at them with our hand lens, different ways of observing. We're going to learn about them. You can learn more about them by studying them in books and pictures. And we can even take pictures with cameras to try to remember them. But then we are going to leave them alone. We're going to leave the animals in their own habitat. All right, we do not need to collect them and take them out of their habitat. Mother nature is much better at taking care of them. So that's just a little bit of a safety note. All right, so when we're describing these little teeny organisms, there are a couple things that we have to be able to recognize them, right? I've got two bugs that you see down here. And sometimes you'll hear that I'll use the word bug or I'll use insect or invertebrate. Bugs is kind of a catch-all word. Um, but when we're looking at these two here, we're gonna look at their overall look. We're gonna look if they have wings. Do these guys have wings? And how many wings do they have? Do they have two wings or four wings? And then we're also gonna look to see if they have any antenna. You guys know where antennas are, right? Oh, look at that cute little bee. He's cleaning his antennas. And now segments, do they have body segments? Like, do they look like they're in parts or pieces? And so we're gonna try to use your fancy words. We're gonna learn a lot of new words to be able to describe these. You're gonna be able to draw some pictures as best you can, just to try to remember the things that you see. Then we're gonna compare them how they look the same, and then contrast how they look different. All right, so when we're talking about insects and we're talking about these body parts, um, you'll see these words, head, thorax, abdomen. You have a head, put your hands on your head. That's your head. Where is your thorax? Have you ever heard that term thorax? Thorax is here where your ribs are. That's your thoracic cavity. But then your abdomen is down here where your belly button is, where all your stomach and intestines are. So you have these three body parts. You have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. But it's not the same as these insects. These insects have three distinct parts. So if you look right here at our bee in the middle, we have a head, the thorax is the middle section, and our legs are always coming off of our thorax. And then we have the abdomen. Now, same thing in this ant here. There's a head, the thorax that always has the legs, and then the abdomen. And again, at some point, these insects will probably have wings at some part of their life. They're gonna have at least two antennas. Sometimes they have more. If you look at our bee there, it's got the two antennas. Over here, we've got a picture of a wasp. I know it's a wasp because it's got the skinny waist. And I see our, here we've got our two antennas there, and it's got one set of wings. And again, this is what we call an exoskeleton. Your skeleton is on the inside. You have bones on the inside. Can you feel your collarbone? Feel right here at your neck. Can you feel your collarbone? And then reach around. Can you feel your vertebrae in the back? Can you feel the back of your neck? Now you are have a vertebrae. You have your bones inside your skin. Insects don't have the skeletons inside. Their outside skin is like their exoskeleton. All right, so that's very different. All right, so all our body parts look different. Look at those eyes. The one in the middle is the fly. They have compound eyes. So if you look at these eyes, again, they don't see the same way that we do because they are made different. In fact, they see colors very different. They see much brighter colors than we do. Um, they can't really even see that you're you, like that you're a shape of a person. They're not even looking for that. They're toning into the UV light, ultraviolet light. So these have big compound eyes and it's like having 6,000 images of something that you're looking at, say 6,000 images of a flower. Now, another thing they have are these ocelli, this ocelli right here. These ocellis are usually little kind of eyes that just detect light and darkness. And those are usually on top of the animal's head. So these right here are circled as well. So we have our compound eyes and our smaller ocelli eyes, very differently put together. Now, when it comes to antenna and mouth parts, again, insects are so diverse. There's so many different kinds. Let's just start out looking at the antenna. So if we look at this one right here in the middle, 
This is the antenna of a butterfly. It has this long part with kind of a little club at the end. Look at this one, this is a moth. It's a moth because it's more feathery looking. And then down here, this is the antenna of a beetle, like a ladybug. Odd, huh? And now let's look at the mouth parts. With our butterfly, remember they have a tongue that rolls out and it can suck up, kind of like you suck up drink out of a straw. So it can siphon everything up from its proboscis. Look at this beetle over here, this mouth part. Look at all those mouth parts. That's for chewing, definite chewing. Oh, this is one we don't like, the mosquito. Here's its mouth part and it's piercing the skin and then sucking back up. So we, again, don't like those piercing ones. Now this is a fly, look at its mouth. Isn't that funny? So it's kind of sponging up things that it, like the liquids and all that it comes into. It sponges it up. So again, you're going to be learning more and more about these different types of insects as you go through the weeks doing your lessons with the docents and all. But overall, kind of remember these general shapes of these little pictures right here. Now we call these creepy crawlies or invertebrates, um, insects you may also hear, but there's a few things that's arthropods is another big word. We like using those big words because then that covers everything. So insects, if we're talking insects like our butterfly, our insects only have six legs, two antenna and three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. Arachnids with Halloween coming up, you'll see lots of big spiders around for decorations. Our arachnids, that's a fancy way for spiders, eight legs, no antenna, and only two body parts. Very different. Now this is, look at this next one. My first, my first slide, I had one of these on there. These are what we call the centipedes or the millipedes. And they have two antennas, two body parts, and they have little segments. And depending on how many legs they have on the segment, that determines if they are, um, an arthrop or if they're a um, millipede or a centipede. And then also in this group, we have the roly polies. If you've ever seen a roly poly, that's actually a crustacean, it breathes through gills underneath its belly. So again, all very different characteristics that we're looking for. Now, something else that we may run into that's not necessarily an insect, but it's along the same invertebrate group are the worms. Raise your hand. I want to see how brave you guys are. Has anybody er here ever picked up worms? Is there anybody? Okay, look around and see who your brave people are because that's who we might need to call on later. <laughs> I'm glad there's some. If you've ever go fishing and you, ha you have to do your bait on the hooks, then you're probably used to doing that. All right, so again, we may run into worms. The other thing we might run into is this snail. See where it's a soft little body, but it has the hard shell on top. Now again, they have this muscular foot that they carry around or crawl around on. But look at how many antennas they have. Lots of antennas. Okay, now look over here. This is one that doesn't have the shell on the back that we just call a slug. Is there anyone there that's ever been brave enough to pick up a slug? That's a little more gooey, huh? So some of these animals, if they're gonna be safe to pick up, we'll let you know. But otherwise, remember, we're going to just stick with the look, learn, and leave alone, okay? We're not going to um, have to necessarily pick them up if you don't want to, all right? All right, so one of the first things we're going to do is make our invertebrate cards. We've got a set of these cards. Your docents, I think, are going to do this with you first. So it'll be, I don't think we go to tulipons until November. So um, we've got a little while to get started on this, but we're gonna make just a set of these cards that have these pictures so that you can use these pictures when you go out and you look for insects and all, you'll have these pictures to kind of compare. So you can look at it and say, is this it? No, it looks a little longer and skinnier. Then you can flip through, all right? All right, so these are the kinds of things we're gonna see. Remember our worms. Those are fancy name is annelid, okay? They have no legs, no antennas. The snails and the slugs, these are what we call gastropod. Gastro is stomach and pod is foot. So their stomach's on top of their foot. <laughs> and now we've got little earwigs. You guys may see these are sometimes called silverfish. Sometimes we get those in our houses. Centipedes and millipedes. Be careful with these because they can bite. So we don't want to handle these. These are those roly polies. These are the ones that are the crustaceans. Okay, and spiders, again, the fancy name is arachnid. 
because they have the eight legs. Now we've got the cicadas and the aphids, leaf hoppers, butterflies and moths. We went over a little bit, the difference between those. Again, you're going to be doing specific lessons later on Well, you'll learn a lot more about these. Dragonflies. Oh, these are fun. Stink bugs. I have a lot of stink bugs here in North Carolina. I don't know if you guys do in California. We'll see. All right. Now this big group, this is wasp, bees, and ants. Now that may not seem like they all go together, but at some point in the ants metamorphosis, they do also have wings and their body shape is very similar. Okay. So that's why they're all together. True flies, lots of different kinds of flies. Beetles, the most popular, of course, is the ladybug. That's again, a type of beetle. Grasshoppers and crickets. Do you guys know the difference between those two? Grasshoppers are bigger. Crickets are a little bit smaller. Sometimes we end up with our crickets inside our houses. All right, so one thing that all of these insects have in common is that they change through their lifestyle. This change is called metamorphosis. And you guys are probably familiar with butterflies, right? So I, because I figured most people knew butterfly, I put in this one for the beetles. So this is where it starts with a ladybug. These are the eggs for a ladybug. Then it transitions to a larva. Now look at this, because when you're out looking and you see this, we, this is why studying the different life cycles is important. Because if you see this, you may not recognize it as a ladybug, that is indeed the larva. Then it turns into a pupa and finally adult. So this is again, just like a butterfly. It's a complete metamorphosis. Now, some of our animals like our grasshoppers, they are just laid as eggs and then they just get, they hatch out small and then they just get bigger over time. So that's what we call an incomplete metamorphosis. So this is why studying bugs is so hard because they're always changing. They always look different. All right, so here's a cute little um, video. That yellow and green thing that just walked by. What is that? And what are these guys that are sticking up? So that yellow green thing, at first we kind of thought it was a caterpillar, but look at its legs. It has two legs coming off of its segment. So it's actually a millipede. And these little things popping up, they don't have any antenna. So those are worms. And it kind of looks like they're looking at each other and a little confused. And that's again, because remember all of these animals go through different stages. So they have a different look. All right, so again, a worm is the annelid and the millipede is the one that goes through metamorphosis with the arthropods. Kind of funny, it even looks like he has little shoes on in the front. All right, so again, this is where you may need to um, Look back at some of the lessons that you do with the docents or look in books to try to identify some of the life cycles. Because this time of year, you're still going to be seeing a lot of the larva and the pupa, um, and even for the butterfly, some eggs. So you'll see all these different body parts or body stages. All right. So if we look at some of these different stages, this first one, number one on this side over here. When you guys go to Tule Ponds, you will see this red skimmer. Now this is a dragonfly. It's got kind of a thick body and you see it's got double wings, but look at what's happening right over here to the left. Little guy with his two antennas. You know how a butterfly has, uh, hatches from an egg to a caterpillar. This is kind of the caterpillar. This is the larva of the dragonfly. So again, they spend a lot of their time in the water. Tule Ponds has a lot of water, so we'll see that. All right, now look over here, look at number two. Silkworms. I don't know if you guys have ever seen silkworms, but when you come to Tule, you'll see them. So these are caterpillars. They're not worms at all. I don't know why they call them that, but they're called, they're just silk, silkworms or caterpillars. These are caterpillars. The eggs, you see this yellow dot over here? Those are the eggs. So the eggs hatch back into the caterpillars. Caterpillars live for a while, grow a bunch, then they spin a cocoon and out hatches a adult moth. So that's pretty cool. And again, you'll see those when you go to Thule. So again, it's just hard to study insects because they always are changing with all their different life cycles. So one thing that you are going to do, though, is try to keep track of some of the things that you see. We've got little booklets that, that we'll make, and you can color up however you do, need to. But one important thing that you put on here is the site. 
So maybe the first time you do it, it will probably be at Tule Ponds. But then after that, it will probably be at your own house, maybe in your backyard. Um, and then eventually we'll get to finding some hopefully there at the school site as well. So the site is where you would record that information. It's also important to note the date and what the weather is. If it's sunny or if it's uh, rainy, would you expect to see the same animals? It's gonna be very different. So make sure you make those observations. And even if it's uh, early morning or middle of the day is gonna make a difference too. Now here we've got a big open space, but sometimes it's just easier to kind of draw what you see. And you don't have to be a fantastic artist. You just have to be able to show maybe antennas or legs or wings or the shape of the body. Now, description here of the site location, you can use words to describe things. Um, you can describe where you're finding it. So that way it'll tell you what habitats to look for to find more in the future. Again, we're not collecting the bugs. We are just looking at them out in the field and making our observations. All right, so let's run through some of these real quick. The number one most popular group is, the, again, the beetles, like our ladybugs. Now, you see that little ladybug up on the top? That's a very helpful insect because it eats all the little aphids. Aphids will kill your some of your flowers and your plants outside. Um, but you can see they love to nibble up those aphids. Now, the Hercules beetle down here, look at that big horn. Again, it uses that for its protection and for getting food. That hard outside, again, is their exoskeleton. Now, down here on this green right here, we've got some milkweed beetles. Milkweed beetles eat milkweed. They reproduce on the plants, usually within the seed pods of the milkweed. Okay, so you'll see those as well. Now on the right, this is a picture from Tule Ponds as well. You can hear the ducks in the back. Do you see all those flies? Do you see them all swarming? So that's an idea of making an observation of these flies. Okay, now so hopefully one will land and maybe we'd get a good look at it and it might look something like this over here. Again, we're looking at its general body shape, number of legs, two antenna and wings. All right, now this is a fun group, those aphids. Remember the ladybug was just eating them? So sometimes these don't necessarily have wings. Um, cicadas, these are what we have a lot of right now. In fact, if I open my back door, it'd be so loud because of all the cicadas that are making their noises. Um, and they climb, they stay in the ground and then they come out and then they keep out of that outside exoskeleton and come out with wings. So again, it's part of their metamorphosis. All right, so we've got some aphids over here. I think Dr. Joyce is gonna tell us about them. Many times people think these orange are eggs, but they're not. If you're looking at them real closely, they're moving. These are aphids. Ladybugs love to eat them. Now, because it was so cold earlier in the spring, everything was really delayed. So you may find a lot of these aphids when you go home and start looking around at plants just outside. Now we see a lot of butterflies and moths. Now the butterflies you'll see out during the day, moths fly at night. And the thing they both have in common is that long tongue, the proboscis, and they have the two pair of wings. Um, and again, as you look at this, this is a monarch. And one of our other grade levels is going to be planting milkweed in your garden so that we can try to get more monarchs there. So eventually that will be our garden area will be a good place to go and look for bugs and all as well. All right, so again, here's our dragonflies and damselflies. You know the difference? Remember, we talked about this red skimmer. Red skimmers are really thick bodied. They're kind of heavy bodied. And when they rest, their wings are out flat. This is a damselfly. It's really skinny. And when it rests, its wings are pulled up behind it. All right, now this in the middle, this is what it looks like in that larva state when it is hatched out and it stays in the water. So you see why it can be so confusing because we've got all these different body stages to go through. All right, now this, you guys recognize these? Grasshoppers and this one down here, smaller crickets. 
Does anyone in, anyone here have any plants or uh, um, animals that you have to feed, that you have to feed crickets to? Oh, fun. Okay. So some of you may know more about crickets than others. If you have animals that have to eat crickets, things like um, tarantula spiders or frogs or turtles, um, you'll know more about taking care of these crickets. Now outside, when you're out in our schoolyard, I bet we have grasshoppers out there. So I'm going to come in the middle of October and we're going to do some experimenting and see if we can find some of these animals at your schoolyard and all as well. So again, if it's green grass, these grasshoppers will be green. If the grass is more brown, like it usually is in our California weather, um, they'll be more brown. Okay, now this is the one that most people don't like. Um, wasp, bees, and ants. Again, they do have some similarities. Now, with all of these, remember they have the skinny waist, the little narrow abdomen. They have four wings. Now, one thing that you see up here at the top, there was a, here we go, there's a hornet. Look at this big wasp that's coming in, this hornet's coming in, and it's trying to attack the bee colony because it's a meat eater, it's a carnivore. But now look at how the hive is trying to protect. All the worker bees are coming up and trying to protect themselves. All right, so again, some of our insects are gonna be plant eaters, some are meat eaters, and some are omnivores. Um, down here, we've got our ants are feeding, and this is an experiment that you're going to do later as well, um, where you put out some food and see what kind of ants come through. But look down here, notice we've got two different kinds of ants. Look, there's one ant that has the stripes on its abdomen and the other is just a, got the black or brown on its abdomen. So see, again, the only way to watch that and to notice it is through observing, just through watching. Again, we're just gonna make sure that we're not standing in the middle of their ant trail. All right, so for your big project, how can we learn more about insects and collect the data? So the first thing we have to do is when we see an insect or bug, we've got to figure out what group it is. We have to identify the group. Then we're gonna make our observations. We're gonna draw as much as we can. We're gonna write as many words as we can, and we're gonna put numbers to that, okay? And then with all the information you have on those worksheets that we showed you, then we're gonna, as a class, we can plot all this data on a line graph. Oh, this is why math is so important, all right? Because when we plot all of this kind of scientific data, we start to see, um, some odd looking features, like we'll see if populations are going up or down. If we see them, if there's, that means there's not food around, um, what's happened that they're not around or that they are around in a whole bunch. So when we do these different graphs, so each insect that you observe could be a color. So let's see, red could be an ant, uh, black could be a mosquito, uh, yellow could be a bumblebee. So again, we've got all these different ways to show on a line graph how we, the data that we've collected. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. When you go out to Thule, and then later when you go doing your own backyards and all, you're going to define an area. So the top picture, I have a hula hoop. I would just put the hula hoop down and I would look inside that hula hoop, just inside the hula hoop and count how many I would see. Like if I saw an ant, I might make a tally mark on my observation sheet. If I saw another ant, then I could make another tally mark. And if I saw a third ant, I'd make a third line, all right? And then if I saw grasshoppers, again, I would mark that and again, try to identify them. I've got those cards, remember, I can go back through and try to match as best I can, all right? The other thing we're going to do, this is art at Tulip Ponds, and we're gonna show you how to do it with this little canvas square. Now, if you don't have these, we're gonna have some at your school, but um, you can also at home, you can use just a piece of paper or um, a pillowcase or something. And all you're gonna do is put it down and then you shake, gently shake the branches, and we see if any insects fall off onto the white sheet. And then same thing, we can take pictures or we can try to identify them as best we can. So that's selecting our area. This is how entomologists look for what kind of insects are around. They'll get a white sheet, put it Just down. Just gently shaking. And then start shaking and then looking for insects. So eventually you're gonna look at how things are starting to move. See there's some coming, you can see them walking and then they'll count how many and put it on a grid.
And then when we're all done, we're just gonna dump that sheet of all the um, leaves that fell off and all the bugs and just leave it. So then those animals are still in their habitat, okay? We don't need to take them. All right, so again, this is the kind of data that you're gonna be collecting. So you're gonna be practicing a lot of your writing skills. Um, again, drawing, you can, as much information as you can to write down is perfect, is great. Now, when you're all done, you can look back through all your sheets and you can make kind of these big graphs like this. See here, recognize these, these are those cards that you did. So when we put out these cards, we put little tally marks. A tally mark is just like one. I put one mark if it's one ant, the second one if it's a two. When you get to five, you go across. Okay, so like when I'm looking at these, like I can say that's five, 10, like that one's already five, this one's two, and that's one. So if you're counting a whole bunch of animals, um, you could always make that greater than 100 or something too. So anyway, so as you get your own information, because we're not, we're not sure if we have any bugs at the school, but we're gonna do it at your own homes and all as well. And then maybe we can also find some at the school. But look when everybody comes back in, we can get everybody that saw worms, get the total number of worms they saw, tally them up, all the spiders they saw, all the beetles they saw. Now, what would we do with that information? This is where we talk about line graphs. And this was I, this is what I was saying, that each animal can have its own color. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. So that would be six of my different kinds of insects. So one place we have maybe the date on the bottom and then the number of insects going up. But this one over here is actually some insects here that we have plotted. And again, you see how it goes up. So looking at this, it looks like June. When would you think we had the most bugs? When did we have the most? If this is the number 0, 5, 10, 15. So this is the highest point right here. So it was in August that we had the most insects at this location where they were looking. So see, it's a quick way to get some information and start asking questions. All right, now same thing with this. Once we plot everybody's information, from Meadows, then we'll have some ideas. Again, different colors will mean different, just like you have a map on a key, we'll have a map for this. And so we'll get some weird looking lines and we'll see, it just kind of depends on what we have. And if we've got some odd looking things, we might need to look back in our notes to figure out what kind of habitat we were looking at. Um, and again, timelines. So again, it's just a way of graphing. This is what makes it a scientific research project. When you have numbers that you can put to something, all right, now, all of this is studying entomology. Entomology is the science of learning insects, the science of bugs. An entomologist is the scientist that studies them. And here we've got four different pictures of different types of entomologists doing different jobs. Um, and again, they're looking at all different, sometimes we study the um, slugs and the earthworms and all as well. But again, these insects are very important to agriculture. Many of these are what make our food, make our plants reproduce. Um, but then we also have to be careful with those that are harmful because we don't want to get sick and we don't want them to transmit diseases to us. All right, now here's a quick little video from Ohio State that tells you a little bit about um, 4-H program that was doing entomology. I'm an entomologist because I like how insects let us know what's happening around us. I like photography and there are so many beautiful insects out there. I really like ecology, which is how all the organisms in a habitat interact and insects are present in almost every habitat. Idealistically, I wanted to help to make the world a better place. I'm an entomologist because I like bugs. Bugs are awesome. I think that insects are very interesting. There are so many of them, but so little is known. I'm an entomologist because I love exploring the outdoors and discovering new insects every day. I really like to look at something up close and see all the detail that's hidden within something that's so small. There are so many things we don't know about mosquitoes and the disease they transmit. That's why I want to devote my life to studying them. Insects providing pollination, including many of the foods that we eat. My experiences in 4-H show me diversity of insects in Ohio. Since I was seven, I've loved watching insects, collecting insects, and now I actually get to do that for my job. And that's why I'm an entomologist. Okay. All right. 
Let me see if I can get rid of my share now. So now I've got everybody again. There we go. Okay, now I've got everybody. All right, so a couple things. You're going to be using some scientific equipment. You're going to be using things like these hand lenses, which of course move back and forth. You'll be using microscopes and all as well. You will be using um, as many different things as you can find, like all different kinds of books. Once you make your observations, then again, you can always learn about them more by looking them up. But one thing um, that we can't, we won't always get started until probably November when we go to tulipons, but until then, keep your eyes open to finding other insects that are around. One of my favorite things to do is to find insects that are already dead. Now, we're not going to go kill any of these insects because they have an important job to do um, in their habitat. But if you find something like this, you guys guess what that is? Not a monarch butterfly, but it's a frillery butterfly that, look how it's lost part of its wing here. This is one that was stuck in the front of a car, in the grill of a car when it stops. So this animal's no longer alive, but it's a great way to study the animal because now this one can't wiggle, it can't bite me, it can't sting me. And I just put it in an old CD case um, and I use a little bit of Elmer's glue. And that way I can, again, put my microscope down on it and get a good look at it. Okay, how about anybody know what this one is? Oh, it's harder to see. Here, let me take the top off. This one should be like a fluorescent green almost. It should be more like the color of this little card right here. But it was sitting out in the sunshine and in a screened in porch. This is a Luna moth. It's a bright green. You're going to be studying some of these as well. So again, you can find a lot of these insects that are already dead and you can put them in a little container and study about them. Look at this big beetle. Eek. And that way it keeps it all. Uh, again, you can put them in any kind of little containers that you can find. Here's a little bee. Oh, my camera's a little. So anyway, we've got all different kinds. Oh, here's some more little bees. Oh, there they are. They're hard to see. Okay, <laughs> all right. So again, look around and see if you can find animals that have already passed away, that are already dead. And then those are great to study because they're not gonna crawl around and bite you or anything. Um, again, we are going to be studying um, all these different types. So at this point, I just wanna open it up to see if there's anybody out there that has any questions. <laughs> 